can you solve this math challenge? Here's the question. Solve for the value of x that satisfies this equation 2 raised to 8 raised to x equals 8 raised to 2 raised to x. Now you can pause this video if you want to give this problem a try. Now suppose you pause this video. Now let's see if you got the correct answer. Alright, so to answer this question, of course, let's get the equation. We have 2 raised to 8 raised to x equals 8 raised to 2 raised to x. So to answer this question, since it is an exponential equation, what we're going to do is to make the bases the same. Now, this 8, we can rewrite this as 2 raised to the power of 3. Now, we have now the same base of 2. Alright, so now let's continue. At this point, we will use some loss of exponent. Take note when we have b raised to a raised to the power of c, this is equivalent to b raised to the power of a times c. So the right-hand side of our equation, we can rewrite this as 2 raised to the power of 3 times 2 raised to the power of x. Now we have equal expression. We have the same base. Therefore, we can say that their exponent must be the same thing. So we have 8 raised to the power of x equals 3 times 2 raised to the power of x. Next, to solve this, again, this 8, we can rewrite this as 2 raised to the power of 3. And then, using again some loss of exponent, if we have b raised to the power of a raised to the power of c, we can rewrite this as b raised to the power of c raised to the power of a, or we can interchange their exponent. So the left-hand side of our equation, we can rewrite this as 2 raised to the power of x raised to the power of 3. Now, we have a common term of 2 raised to the power of x. So what we're going to do is to replace this with another variable, and let's call this as y. So all of this, 2 raised to the power of x, becomes y, like this. So we have a cubic equation, y cubed equals 3 times y. So to solve this, don't divide both sides by y, of course. We will miss one of the possible cases. So what we need to do here is to equate this to 0. And then we have a common factor of y, so why not? Let's factor out y. So we have y multiplied by y squared minus 3 equals 0. Now since it is equal to 0, we can use the 0 property. So we can say that y equals 0 or y squared minus 3 equals 0. Now, since y equals 2 raised to the power of x and we have an exponential equation, and take note, this is always greater than 0. So y cannot be equal to 0. So this case is not possible. So what we're going to do here is to use the second case wherein it says that y squared minus 3 equals 0. So to solve for y, let's add 3 on both sides and if we do that we get y squared equals 3 now get the square root on both sides and since y is always greater than 0 so we want the positive value of y so we have y equals positive square root of 3 now this y is also the same thing as 2 raised to the power of x so we can replace this y with 2 raised to the power of x. Because our goal is to solve for the value of x, not the value of y. Now, to solve for this x, what we're going to do is to convert this exponential equation into logarithmic equation. Now take note, when we have an exponential equation b raised to the power of a equals c, we can write this as follows. We have a equals logarithm of c to the base of b. So this exponential equation, we can rewrite this as x equals logarithm of square root of 3 to the base of 2. And, and ladies and gentlemen, this is the value of x. So we have logarithm of square root of 3 to the base of 2. And of course, we want to check if this value is correct. Now let's get our equation and we are now going to check our answer. So we need to replace all of this x with 
the value that we get a while ago, logarithm of square root of 3 to the base of 2. Now, if the left-hand side and the right-hand side becomes equal or the same, then this value must be absolutely correct. So, to start with, we will use some laws of logarithm. Take note, when we have b raised to the power of logarithm of c to the base of b, we have the same base. This is just the value of c. So, looking at this, we have 2 raised to the power of logarithm of square root of 3 to the base of 2. So, using this identity, this is just equivalent to square root of 3. Nice. Next, how about on the left-hand side of our equation? Now, this 8 again, we can replace this with 2 raised to the power of 3. Again, using some loss of exponent, we can interchange this exponent. So, we can rewrite this as 2 raised to the power of logarithm square root of 3 to the base of 2 raised to the power of 3. Again, using this identity, we can say that 2 raised to the power of logarithm of square root of 3 to the base of 2 must be equal to square root of 3. Now, we have 2 raised to square root of 3 raised to the power of 3. Now, if we simplify this, square root of 3 raised to the power of 3, so we have square root of 3 times square root of 3 times square root of 3, 3 times. And square root of 3 times square root of 3, this is just 3, and multiply this by square root of 3. So the value of square root of 3 raised to the power of 3 must be equal to 3 times square root of 3. Next, using again some loss of exponent, the left-hand side of our equation, we can write this as 2 raised to the power of 3 raised to the power of square root of 3. Now, what is 2 raised to the power of 3? Yes, you are correct. This is just 8. So the left-hand side and the right-hand side balance are equal. Therefore, we can say that this value of x must be absolutely correct. So, what is the value of x that satisfies this equation? Then our answer is logarithm of square root of 3 to the base of 2. And as always, we are done. Now, for your practice, try to answer this. Solve for the value of x that satisfies this equation. 3 raised to the power of 9 raised to the power of x equals 9 raised to the power of 3 raised to the power of x. Now, if you have an answer, just comment your answer in the comment section down below. Bye for now.